many considered the fall of the Berlin Wall as the beginning of a free world. The United States had won the Cold War. The idea was that all countries would embrace democracy. Internet would spread information and undermine dictatorships. These dreams have not come true. China has become a dominant power. The Arab Spring failed, and countries like Russia and Turkey have moved away from democracy. And even in the West, a free media can no longer be taken for granted, and independent judiciaries are also under pressure. And while internet did increase people's access to information, it has come with fake news and massive digital surveillance. Many people are worried about authoritarianism. Political scientists can help us understand what authoritarianism is and how it might relate to other tendencies such as populism or xenophobia. To understand authoritarianism, we need to look at more than elections. We must get away from seeing states as separate units that are either democratic or authoritarian. Instead, we should study authoritarian practices. These can occur within democratic states by several states collaborating or with the help of corporate actors. These authoritarian practices are about sabotaging accountability. This is done in two ways. First is lying to the public or keeping secrets from them without a legitimate reason. The NSA, for example, helped by secret agencies in many countries, was snooping on millions of people. This was done with data obtained from the biggest tech companies. Their spying program was repeatedly denied, until this became impossible. The second way of sabotaging accountability is by disabling voice. Even in democracies like India and Mexico, journalists and activists are regularly found dead after criticizing those in power. Governments like Iran and Syria harass and try to shut up critical voices even far beyond their borders through the internet. Understanding authoritarianism as a practice allows us to understand how these practices function, not just in dictatorships, but even in democracies, in transnational settings and with corporate help, when they thrive and how they are best countered. Do you want to know more about authoritarian practices and what research can tell us? Go to www.authoritarianism-global.uva.nl